The innovative prowess of our ancient ancestors was as impressive as that of anyone alive in modern times. Their inventions from millennia ago paved the way for the continued development of new technologies today. Such was their ingenuity that some of their most bizarre and extraordinary creations still elude our full understanding. Seeing is believing, or so they say. So let's check some of them out. One thing that every modern human being on the planet has in common is that they need to use the toilet. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have access to a toilet, though. Not everyone has a toilet today, but things are better than they were 2,700 years ago. Back then, having a sit-down toilet was a luxury enjoyed only by the rich. Here's one such 2,700-year-old luxury toilet that was found during the excavation of an ancient mansion in Jerusalem in early October 2021. Only a handful of private bathrooms of this age have ever been found in Jerusalem before. The toilet block is made out of limestone and comes with a carefully carved seat and a hole in the middle for obvious reasons. It even had a septic tank beneath it. Forty ceramic bowls were found arranged around the toilet in a circular formation. It's likely that they would have held incense or perfumes, and would have been the equivalent of air fresheners. It hasn't yet been possible to prove who the mansion belonged to, but it's likely that it was one of the various kings of the Judean kingdom. Incredible discoveries were made at Egypt's Temple of Esna in March 2023, as a joint Egyptian-German team uncovered stunning zodiac carvings during their restoration and recoloring work. The temple, constructed during the Ptolemaic and Roman eras, features a beautiful colonnaded vestibule with 24 pillars adorned with lotus and palm tree capitals, and is dedicated to the ram-headed god of creation, Knum, as well as other deities. The zodiac carvings, which include all 12 signs of the zodiac alongside planets such as Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, were found on the ceiling of the vestibule which was placed in front of the temple itself under the Roman Emperor Claudius. The images, carved in relief, depict the heavens and several stars and constellations that aided the ancient Egyptians in time calculations. Professor Christian Leitz of the University of Tübingen said that representations of the zodiac are rare in ancient Egyptian temples, as the zodiac originated in Babylonian astronomy and the ancient Egyptians weren't familiar with it until Ptolemaic times. Restoring the ceiling images to their original state has been a challenging task, as they were hidden under layers of dirt and soot for centuries. However, this dirt and soot have also helped preserve them for nearly 2,000 years. Nikola Tesla is a name that has become synonymous with brilliance, eccentricity, and even conspiracy theories. His groundbreaking work on electricity and energy is widely recognized, but lesser known are his more obscure projects, such as the earthquake machine. In 1896, Tesla was experimenting with oscillations to be used for energy transfer, with the goal of creating a steam-powered oscillator that could generate various frequencies. His invention was completed in 1897. And the following year, he supposedly managed to vibrate his laboratory enough that it alarmed his neighbors, who believed an earthquake was imminent. Tesla envisioned using the vibrations generated by his device for peaceful applications, such as generating electricity by transforming vibrations into electrical energy, and even to prospect the underground. He believed that the waves generated by his invention could be used to reflect or be deflected by geological structures, providing a model of the underground. However, while Tesla's ideas were revolutionary, his earthquake machine never went beyond the prototype stage due to its limited power. Nonetheless, his work laid the groundwork for modern seismology, which uses similar principles to explore the underground today. The construction feats of the dynastic Egyptians, including the pyramids and temples of the Giza Plateau, are well known. However, some of these structures, made from hard stones such as basalt, granite, quartzite, and diorite, simply could not have been made by the people of dynastic Egypt due to the lack of suitable tools. 
The problem is exacerbated by the fact that there was very little iron in Egypt until the 7th century BCE, and the ancient Egyptians viewed iron as an impure metal associated with evil. One example of mysterious ancient Egyptian stone-cutting technology is the unfinished obelisk at Aswan, which is nearly one-third larger than any other ancient Egyptian obelisk ever erected, and would have weighed nearly 1,200 tons if finished. Egyptologists believe that handheld stone dolerite pounders were used to shape the pink granite obelisk, but this theory is unlikely due to the material's hardness. The pattern left by the tool used to shape the obelisk indicates the use of a technology that the dynastic Egyptians did not possess. The evidence is cut into the stone, and these artifacts are the smoking gun that proves the existence of a higher sophistication than what is currently accepted. The implications of this are staggering as it suggests that there was a lost high technology in ancient Egypt that we have yet to fully comprehend. In the mid-1850s, Michael Faraday was experimenting with the properties of light and matter. He was mounting thin sheets of gold leaf onto microscope slides when he accidentally created the first metallic gold colloids. To make the gold leaf thin enough to be transparent, he had to use chemical means rather than mechanical ones. During the process of washing the films of gold, Faraday noticed a faint ruby-colored fluid, which he kept in bottles and used for similar experiments involving shining a beam of light through the liquid. He realized that the cone effect created was due to suspended gold particles too small to be seen with the scientific apparatus of the time, but which scattered light to the side, now known as the Faraday-Tyndall effect. This discovery made Faraday one of the pioneers of nanoscience and nanotechnology. Interestingly, over 150 years later, these colloids are still optically active, and shining a modern laser pointer through the bottle produces a cone of light. Although most colloids last only for a few months or a year, the reason for Faraday's gold colloids still being active is unknown, as the bottles cannot be unsealed without damaging their contents. Crystal skulls are among the most contentious discoveries in all of archaeology. Experts are divided on whether they are genuine ancient artifacts or more recent fakes, and they've even served as the inspiration for an Indiana Jones movie. So far, 13 purported crystal skulls have been found, all of which are crafted from solid blocks of quartz with astonishing precision. The earliest record of them comes from the beginning of the 19th century. At the time of its alleged discovery, the first crystal skull was claimed to be between two and 5,000 years old. That claim is impossible to verify because quartz cannot be accurately dated. It was also claimed that the first skull was discovered in an ancient Mayan temple. That claim cannot be verified either. However, there's reason to believe that they might be fakes. A 2007 analysis of four of the skulls carried out by a team of American and British scientists concluded that the technology used to create the skulls wasn't available until the 19th century, and that three of the skulls had 20th century origins. Of course, the counterclaim is that the ancient Mayans may have had technologies we don't know about. This debate probably won't end anytime soon. In the modern age, we understand the principle of a vaccine. A small amount of a disease or poison is introduced to the body, and the body works out how to create antibodies to protect itself against the disease, thus developing immunity. Amazingly, Mithridates VI of Pontus seemed to understand the basics of this principle 2,100 years ago. The paranoid ruler feared being poisoned by one of his enemies, so he deliberately ingested small amounts of poison and treated himself with honey to recover. He had reason to be paranoid. His own father had been killed by poisoning. Over time, he began to add herbs and other unknown ingredients to the honey, coming up with the formula for a drink known as Mithridate. With this invention, the king genuinely believed that he'd invented an antidote to every poison in the world. He later regretted this choice as, during a later war with the Romans, he attempted to evade capture by drinking a lethal dose of poison. His invention had worked too well. Mithridates was immune to the poison and was eventually captured and killed. 
Sadly, he took his Mithridate recipe to the grave with him, so we'll never know if he'd truly invented a universal antidote or not. Archaeologists have discovered evidence of steel tools being used during the Late Bronze Age in the Iberian Peninsula, a finding that challenges previous assumptions about the region's technological capabilities. A recent study analyzed stone pillar stelae and found that the engravings on the rock were created using tempered steel, a material that was thought to have only been used after the Roman conquest. The researchers also analyzed an iron chisel from the same period and found that it had the necessary carbon content to be classified as steel. According to experts, the chisel and its context suggest that iron metallurgy and the tempering of steel were likely developed by small communities in Iberia, rather than as a result of colonization. The study, which was published in February 2023, involved an analysis of stelae pillars made from silicate quartz sandstone, a hard rock that can only be worked with tempered steel. The researchers conducted an experiment with a stonemason, a blacksmith, and a bronze caster, who attempted to work the stone using chisels made from different materials. The experiment showed that only the tempered steel chisel was able to work the stone, suggesting that the people of the Late Bronze Age in Iberia were capable of tempering steel to create tools. Su Song, a celebrated astronomer of the Northern Song Dynasty, would have turned 1,000 years old in 2020. One of his most impressive feats was the creation of the water-driven astronomical clock tower, a remarkable astronomical device that was among the most advanced of its kind in ancient China. At the age of 70, Song used the latest advancements in astronomy and mechanical engineering to design and build the water-driven astronomical clock tower, which incorporated features for astronomical observation, time measurement, and timekeeping. The tower stood 40 feet high and was powered entirely by hydropower. At its apex was an armillary sphere that could track the movements of the sun and stars, while the celestial globe in the middle recorded the features of the starry sky. Utilizing the concept of a celestial sphere to demonstrate celestial body movements, the bottom section contained a timekeeping system. The internal mechanism of the tower was similar to the escapements found in modern clocks, which highlights the technological sophistication of the Song Dynasty. After the water-driven astronomical clock tower was completed, Su Song documented its design and operation in his publication, Qin Yi Qiang Fa Yao. Unfortunately, the tower was later destroyed and couldn't be rebuilt. Only in recent decades has the tower been reconstructed, allowing us to marvel at Su Song's ingenuity once more. The line of technological advancements that ended with the creation of the computer started with the invention of the abacus. If we accept that statement as fact, then we can consider this tiny Chinese abacus ring the world's first piece of wearable technology. The impressive piece of practical jewelry was made about 300 years ago during the Chinese Qing Dynasty. The device is square and only half an inch tall and wide. You'd need to carry a very small pin around with you to get any practical use out of it. It's simply too small and delicate to be operated with fingers. These rings were called jusans and were used by traders and market stall owners to quickly calculate prices on the spot so they could agree on purchases or sales. Unfortunately, history doesn't tell us when the first jusan was made or who came up with the concept. Whoever that person was, they came up with an on-the-spot mathematical aid that wouldn't be bettered until the invention of the electronic calculator in the 1960s. Half of Bangladesh's Govinda Bida Temple is a 6th century place of worship used by ancient Hindus. The other half is much harder to identify, and how the two halves came to be woven together in such a haphazard fashion is also difficult to explain. Both sides of the temple come from different times, separated by several centuries. Adjoining the 6th century Hindu temple is an 11th century temple, built in such a manner that it was clearly intended to be an extension of the original. Even that might only be part of the story. Inconsistencies with the design of the temple's walls and foundations suggest that they might have been built on top of even earlier buildings and temples. 
The most telling piece of evidence is the discovery of a bodhisattva terracotta head buried at the site. Either someone buried it there 200 years after it was made, or people have been coming here to do their worship since at least the 4th century. Perhaps it goes back even farther than that. We have no way of knowing. The existence of the Vitala Temple in India isn't a mystery in and of itself. Found in Hampi, it's one of the most revered and ornate ancient temples in the whole country, built somewhere between the 14th and 16th centuries. It would be considered remarkable because of its incredible beauty, even if there wasn't anything mysterious about it. But there is. This temple wasn't just designed to look good, it was also designed to sound good. Inside the temple is a pavilion containing 56 pillars, each of which makes a different sound when struck with an object. The tour guides who work at the temple insist that every single pillar is tuned to one of the seven notes that make up the Sa Re Ga Ma Sanskrit musical scale. The ancient system of notation is still used in Hindi music today, but was devised thousands of years ago. The strange qualities of the pillars are probably down to the fact that they're composed of a geopolymer blend of metallic alloys, silicon particles, and granite. Officially speaking, geopolymers weren't invented until the 1950s, so they shouldn't be present in this temple at all. The mystery remains unexplained. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.